From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lambert here with you. Glad you are here with us tonight on News Channel 5. Plus, what a day it is in the city of Nashville. Enormous news today, and we're going to talk all about it tonight. The Titans in the city of Nashville have agreed in principle to a deal that can lead to the building of a new football stadium, multi-purpose facility on the east side of the Cumberland River, just east of the current Nissan Stadium footprint. It is a $2.1 billion stadium to build. It will be paid predominantly by the Tennessee Titans, but there are some public funds involved. We'll get to a breakdown on that in just a moment. The goal is to have it open in 2026 and house not just the Titans, but open the door for the city of Nashville and the Titans to host the next level of major events. And we've talked about this many times on this program. Nashville has gone above and beyond when it comes to hosting all sorts of events. Not just in the sports world, but we've seen a ton of those in the last several years from the Stanley Cup final to the NHL draft to the NHL All-Star game to the NFL draft. Obviously, the marathons, college bowl games, the IndyCar race that's come here and been so successful the last couple of years. Nashville continues to raise the bar on events that it can host. But as we've talked about before, there was a cap on the type of event that Nashville could hold in this city based off of the stadium that we have. Nissan Stadium is just frankly out of date. And it is a stadium that has none of the amenities that the major events, the top tier events that have to be played in a stadium are looking for. So what's the answer to that? having a new stadium that fits that bill. And that's what this stadium will bring to Nashville, is the ability to bid on and host down the road a Super Bowl, a college football national championship game or college football playoff game, an NCAA tournament Final Four, WrestleMania, more and more concerts that go over there. It's not just about the sports. There's a lot of other things that could go in the building as well. But that is what you get out of this. Having a state-of-the-art stadium enclosed. There will be a roof over the top of it. And a playing surface that will be the top of the line of artificial surface. And I know some of the purists don't love that from a football perspective. I, I happen to be one of those. But the idea of having an artificial surface on the field means a lot in terms of what you can do with the purpose of the building. Because you can play a lot more games on a turf field than you can play on natural grass. Part of what has held the Titans from being able to do some of the things they want to do for the community back is the idea that Nissan Stadium is a natural grass field. And you have to be careful about how many events or how many games you put on the field to make sure that it's a suitable field come Sunday when the Titans have to play on it. So this opens up the doors for a lot of things when it comes to the Tennessee Titans. That is obviously the biggest story of today. We want to open up the phone lines on that, 737-7767. But I also know that the morning started, at least, with a lot of water cooler talk, probably at your office and many offices throughout the state of Tennessee about what we saw Saturday in Knoxville as Tennessee edged Alabama, battle of number six versus number three, two unbeatens, and the Vols came out on top 52-49 on Chase McGrath's wobbly but good 40-yard field goal on the game's final play. It's Tennessee's first win over Alabama in 16 seasons. It's the first time Tennessee started 6-0 since the national championship season back in 1998 and moves the Vols up to number three in the national polls. And I can tell you this from standing there on the field on Saturday. That was the loudest college football stadium I have ever been in. 
It was also the best college football regular season game I have ever seen in person. And I've been fortunate uh, this job, this career has taken me to several places. I've been to all of the Big Ten stadiums. I've been to the vast majority of the Big 12 stadiums, multiple stadiums of the Pac-12 and ACC, and a huge chunk of the SEC. So when I tell you that what Neyland Stadium sounded like on Saturday afternoon, especially in the fourth quarter and the waning moments of that game, was the loudest I've ever heard of stadium, that's high praise. Because I've seen some of the best stadiums in the country and the other stadiums that people consider to be really, really, really loud. And Tennessee was right there. I mean, it moved the Richter scale in Knoxville on Saturday night. That's how loud it was in the waning moments of that game. The scene was incredible, but amazingly, the game matched up to the hype. It was two top six teams going back and forth and back and forth for four hours. Yes, there are 101 points scored, but what was crazy about this is I saw some shootouts in my days of covering the Big 12. And oftentimes I walked away from those games that the score would be 50 to 40, and I would think, okay, yes, the offenses were good, but gosh, those defenses stink. I didn't walk away from Neyland Stadium on Saturday night saying Alabama and Tennessee just can't play any defense at all. Tennessee is one of the best rushing defenses in the country. Alabama's coached by Nick Saban. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about one of the great defensive minds in the history of the sport. One of the great all-time coaches out there. You're not going to be able to convince me that Alabama is just no good at defense at all. What you saw on Saturday was you saw absolutely elite offense and two incredible quarterbacks. And it was a game that will go down as one of the best games in college football in the regular season of all time. And a game that also announced officially that Tennessee is back under Josh Heupel. Just a year and a half in, the ball's up to number three in the country. They are 6-0, and and they will be favored in every game left on their schedule except for that trip between the hedges to take on Georgia on November 5th. And that game will be for the SEC Championship. That's what it's going to come down to. And Georgia will be the favorite in that game, barring something crazy in the next couple of weeks. But Tennessee certainly has a shot to win, just like they had a shot to win against Alabama. And that is the thing that has changed so much here. Is even when Tennessee has been good over the last decade, when they've had some of their better teams, you still walked into a game like Saturday or into a potential matchup with Georgia in a few weeks and really didn't think that their best effort could win. It would have taken a miracular miraculous performance. Saturday in Knoxville, the reason it felt so different is everybody who walked into that stadium understood that Tennessee had a shot to win the game. And they did. They proved it. And that's what's different about this Tennessee program right now. There's not a team in the country that they cannot beat. So Tennessee is officially back as an SEC title contender and a national championship contender. Because you know when you can compete at that top level in the SEC, you can beat anybody else in the country. So Tennessee's absolutely in the mix as the number three ranking shows. Your thoughts on that game tonight, your thoughts on this deal on the Titans' new stadium. Those are the two big topics we want to get to here tonight on Sportsline. It's no Titans talk this Monday night because there was no Titans game, but obviously a huge story made today on a Titans Monday with the idea of this stadium. And I want to give you some bullet points of what we know here. So here's the deal. It's a $2.1 billion stadium for construction. That includes, by the way, some demolition cost of the old stadium because Nissan Stadium will come down when the new stadium is ready for play. That, by the way, will take about three to seven months to completely level it. So that's a considerable process, and their goal is to have it done by the time the stadium opens. If it doesn't happen, it 
it might have to go through that first season, but it's going to be a process and it's not cheap, but that fits into part of the construction cost and part of the stadium deal of building this stadium. The breakdown of who's going to pay for it, and we've had several debates on this program, and we can continue to do that tonight. 737-7767 is the number. But the breakdown in terms of who pays is as follows. The state of Tennessee is pledging a one-time monetary payment of $500 million. The city today, this is the agreement, the city is pledging $760 million dollars of bonds that will go towards the stadium construction. Those bonds will be replenished by a 1% increase on all hotel taxes in the city. I believe that goes from 7 to 8%. But the 1% increase, that 1% goes to paying back the bonds that will pay off the construction of the stadium. The rest of the money for that will be made up by the sales tax of everything sold within the stadium and then once it's developed the area around the stadium. So that's where the money comes from. The city is putting in bonds to get it done but all of that gets paid back through dollars elsewhere. It's not going to raise your property taxes. It's not going to raise other taxes within the city. It's going to get paid for by the use of the venue itself, and it's going to get paid for by tourism dollars, by people coming in to stay at the hotels within the city. That, by the way, is very similar to what has happened in several other stadiums. There have been nine stadiums built in the NFL in the last 15 years, except for L.A. and New York, which managed to completely fund the new stadiums privately. Seven of the other stadiums, or the other seven stadiums, I should say, all had to use some level of public funding. Nashville would be right about the midpoint of how much public funding it would be, but it has a plan to pay back the general fund or these bonds from the city of Nashville with these tax plans. And that's been happening in some other occasions as well. Pretty much every city raised a hotel tax to do the stadium build. Some others did even more progressive type taxes in terms of car rental and general sales tax and other things like that. That's not going to be the case here. It's going to be the stadium strictly and hotel taxes that will pay it off. There also is a benefit to the city here, by the way, and this was something the mayor made very clear this afternoon and has not been something that has been discussed a whole lot in the debate about this stadium. And I think it's important to make clear here tonight. When Nissan Stadium, the idea came about and was ultimately built in 1999, the agreement between the Titans and the city at that time was a 30-year deal that ran through the end of 2028. That deal was then extended on a, or in the process of being extended, I'm not sure if it's officially been extended or not, but it was a team option. So without a new stadium, the lease would be extended by the Titans for 10 more years, which takes you up to 2038 into 2039. So essentially 40 year period. During that time, the city of Nashville had agreed to maintain a first-class facility up to date with all the consistent NFL trends around the league for whatever monetary value that would take. The mayor's office, through a firm that looks at facilities around the country, did a study to try to determine what the cost would be to the city if that lease would play itself out and the Titans would stay in Nissan Stadium. And that firm determined the cost would be between $1.75 billion and $1.95 billion. So just shy of $2 billion just to maintain the 
necessary renovations and upgrades to keep Nissan Stadium viable for as long as it stood and was the home of the Titans. This alleviates that completely. The city no longer has to do that because the Titans will incur any overruns on the cost of the building and they also will assume the backstop of all needs in future renovations or upgrades of the new stadium. So the city is essentially off the hook of what could be up to $2 billion of taxpayer money having to go into working on the stadium. So yes, there's some money up front in terms of those bonds, but hopefully not a taxpayer obligation. On the back end, though, once the stadium is built, the city is in a very good financial shape in terms of that, and that was something the mayor certainly tried to stress a lot throughout the course of today. It will be a 30-year lease at least on the new stadium, but as a team source told me today, they hope, based off of new construction techniques, that a new state-of-the-art stadium built in 2022 will be very different than the stadium that was not quite state-of-the-art in Nissan Stadium when it was built in 1999. And we've seen this in a lot of other places. Stadiums built in the 90s have had about a 20, 25, maybe 30-year shelf life. The hope is that this new stadium, as the team source told me, will be standing and lasting for 50 years and beyond as a centerpiece here in the city of Nashville. Now, some of the features of the stadium itself. It will be a translucent roof. It will be a roof on top of the stadium. That's how you get the Super Bowl and the, the Final Four and all those events that need to make sure that it has decent weather. And you do that by being inside. But the roof will be translucent. It will be much like what we see at Vegas Allegiant Stadium and the Titans are going to use the same architecture firm to help design the, the one that worked on the Vegas Stadium Monica or Modica I think is the name uh, I'll double check on that but they helped out with the Vegas Stadium and they're going to be heavily involved in this one Square footage on the Vegas Stadium, 1.8 million square feet. Square footage on this one is supposed to be 1.7 million, but the roofs will be very similar. The team did consider a retractable roof, which I know is a favorite of a lot of fans out there because ideally you'd like to be out in the weather and in the conditions on the good days and then be able to shut the roof on the bad days. The team ultimately decided that it was not going to do a retractable roof because it could cost up to a quarter of a billion dollars more to make it retractable. Plus, beyond that, what we've seen is there have been construction or repair costs for retractable roofs at a lot of these stadiums. They have had issues on that that have been very costly down the road. But the other factor there, too, is if you look at the retractable roof stadiums in the NFL, the vast majority of the time... The roof is closed. I don't have the exact numbers for you, but it's, it's more than 50% of the time that NFL stadiums with retractable roofs are closed anyway, even when the weather's not that bad outside, because the NFL requires if there's any chance of rain that the roof be shut. I mean, how many days are there a 20 or 30% chance of rain? A lot of them. So that wipes away a huge chunk. Any day where the wind is particularly bad or it's particularly cold, maybe even if it's particularly hot, the roof is going to be closed. I had another source tell me that even here in Nashville, where we generally think the weather's pretty good for most of the football season, they would guess that basically 50% of the time or less, that roof would be able to be open based off of the current NFL guidelines. So that was part of the decision as well, to avoid that costly extra expenditure. Because by the way, the stadium as it stands right now would be the second most expensive stadium in the league behind SoFi. A huge part of that is construction costs in a 2022 world. But it's going to be a nice stadium when it is built. Let's make that clear. The Titans do have some specific designs to help make it feel 
like the translucent part, make it feel more like you're outside and not in a old school dome, if you will. And they've done a lot on the initial designs of this, but some of the actual details have to really get on paper in the next several months once it's officially approved by the Metro Council and the Sports Authority to allow them to put shovel in the ground maybe as soon as late next summer or early next fall to try to be open for the 2026 season. A lot of questions about parking. It will absolutely be impacted. There's no way around that because you're going to have one stadium that they're playing in and another stadium under construction in the old parking lot. So for a time during construction, it is going to be a mess to try to get over to that compound for stadiums. But the Titans are hoping, along with the city, that traffic to and from games will be re-envisioned essentially through this process. And in the short term, people will find other ways to get down to the stadium and be a part of everything down there. But in the long term, then that's just going to be part of the game day experience. And the city has plans for, I don't know if you want to call it a transit hub necessarily, but there will be a WeGo station on the East Bank in the new East Bank development that the mayor's laid out. There will be, as he put it, and I don't know exactly what this means, but the mayor described it this afternoon as a chance to have a north-south spine for transit within the city. You get the feeling that there's movement to really try to put a transit hub over there and make it a focal point to get people in and out of downtown in ways that they've never done before. We all know that getting transit passed in this city has been a problem, so we'll see how they get done with that. But that is at least the hope for a lot of people as they try to get done to this. And then there's a part two that you have the Titans returning some land. Once Nissan Stadium is leveled, about 66 acres are going to go back into the city's possession for development of that East Bank project around the new stadium, which will have a naming rights deal that is yet to be announced because the stadium is yet to be officially done. But here's the deal with that 66 acres. A huge chunk of that is going to go into green space that helps out in a multitude of ways. But one way that the team wants to use it with the city's blessing is to create tailgating spaces in those green spaces. So instead of parking and pulling up out of your car, you'll be able to put up a tent or, or be in a green space. The way it was described to me is they want it to look a lot like the Grove at Ole Miss, which is considered one of the great tailgating environments in all of North American sports, certainly in college football. The Titans would like to have the professional version of that around whatever the new stadium will be. So there are a lot of things to look at in this stadium. The other thing I should mention, the stadium itself going to be a 55 to 60,000 seat stadium. So that's lower in capacity. In fact, it would be the smallest capacity stadium in the NFL today but team officials assure me it is plenty big enough to fit the requirements to bid for a Super Bowl within the NFL and that the NFL is essentially pushing more towards smaller venues that get people closer to the action and provide them a more premium experience whether that's putting them in suites or in club level, or just providing some level of other social experience with their ticket, there are going to be many more opportunities for fans to do more at the game than just have a seat. I think you're going to look at the possibility of having a dozen, maybe two dozen different type of ticket options that all bring something extra to the experience. And maybe no ticket options that is just simply a ticket to get you inside the door. And as it was described earlier today as well, the stadium itself, the way they hope to draw it up, the upper deck seats will be at about the same level, at least the starting seats, as the middle of the club deck at Nissan Stadium now. So every seat in the building no matter what the price tag or the amenities along with it, will be significantly closer to the action and the field than it is right now in Nissan Stadium. 
So that's kind of the basic bullet point breakdowns of what you're looking at right here. I want to bring you guys into the discussion next. Phone lines wide open. We want to bring you in after this. We can also talk Tennessee football as well if you'd like. 737-7767, the number. We get to your phone calls on a busy Monday in terms of Tennessee football and the Titans' new stadium plan. Your phone calls after this. This is Sportsline on News Channel 5 Plus.